video three, adapting tips to your kit and pulling the perfect shot. My machine has a single boiler and a PID system. I have an old commercial grinder, which I have modified for single dosing, which means each time I can only grind enough espresso for a single shot. And I try to remove all the espresso from the grinder before the next time I use it. Now your equipment is very likely to be different, likely nicer than mine. So I'll need to assume our brewing setups have a few elements in common. First are the inputs we can control. I will assume the following. One, you're able to control and measure the beverage yield. This is the amount of liquid that ends up in the cup. Basically, you need to be able to decide when the shot is finished. Two, you are able to change and precisely measure your dose or the amount of ground coffee you put in the basket. I use an inexpensive 10th gram scale for this. Three, you can adjust the grind setting on your grinder. Exactly which grinder you need or how many settings you need to have is difficult to say. Some thrifty people can make delicious espresso with very inexpensive machines, but a good baseline to start with is to have four or more grind settings within the espresso range, with the finest of those starting just before you clog the machine. If, when pulling the shot and all else equal, going one click finer or coarser changes your shot time by more than 10 seconds, your equipment isn't suited to the kind of adjustment I'll go through in this video. These particular ones, I believe, are precise enough. These others might not cut it without a few other techniques I will have to talk about in another video, and will also benefit from using a pressurized board filter. PID, pressure, temperature settings, pre-infusion, flow, or other inputs are all nice to have, but you can still follow my video without them. I also have to assume some other attributes about your machine, but these don't have to do with making adjustments. If your setup does not have these, there may still be some useful advice here, but you also might find better resources elsewhere for making better espresso with your setup. I assume you have a tamper that fits your portafilter reasonably well, and that you have non-pressurized portafilters. Pressurized portafilters provide a floor for resistance to flow by limiting the number of holes for espresso to exit. This helps beginners because you can put coarse grinds in and still get something like espresso out. However, they are likely to frustrate you if you follow my video with one. All right, here I am pulling a shot on my espresso machine. So for this first shot, I get a lot of things right and a few things wrong. I clean the portafilter, weigh 15.7 grams of coffee beans, grind them, empty the grinder, and evenly place it in the portafilter. My puck preparation isn't great though. I just placed the distributor in the portafilter without a spin and tamped at a skewed angle. The shot came out really fast and with lots of channeling, particularly on the right side where the puck was thinnest. It produced 47 grams in 14 seconds. I just tossed this shot without even filming me tasting it. Before I prepare the second shot, I know I need to grind finer because the puck didn't provide enough resistance. I adjust the grind finer three clicks and distribute 15.7 grams evenly into the portafilter. Then I spin the distributor and give a calm, even tamp. It comes out a little more evenly, but still too quickly and with some channeling. Thirty-seven grams in sixteen seconds, but it sure made a mess. I didn't want any more than a sip of this shot because it tasted pretty unbalanced. I know I need to grind finer still because the puck didn't provide enough resistance. I adjust the grind two clicks finer and follow the same procedure of dosing 15.7 grams into the portafilter, distributing the grounds and tamping. Then I place it in the machine. Sorry I didn't nail focus on this shot. So while you can't see what is happening, I'll describe a special technique for pre-infusion on simple single boiler machines. It won't work on every machine. When I loosen the steam wand knob before pulling a shot, the pump pushes some of the water through the wand, effectively reducing the pressure in the system. This slows the water as it is flowing into the puck, which I believe reduces channeling. I'll close the knob after seven or eight seconds to avoid lowering the temperature in my boiler too much. Some machines have a partial pressure pre-infusion, which automates this process without water waste. This shot flowed much more evenly, but a bit slowly. It produced 29 grams in 30 seconds. This shot would be great for milk drinks, 
where you don't want to water down the drink as much. Definitely the best shot so far, but there's more room to improve. For this last shot, I've got a pretty good idea of what to do. I reduced the dose from 15.7 grams to 15.4 grams to give a little less resistance with the same fine grind. Then I grind and distribute as I have before, paying close attention to the tapping. The espresso flows out very evenly. You might see me getting excited in the reflection of the portafilter. It experienced very minimal channeling and flowed at 41 grams in about 31 seconds. The shot is delicious. I've had better on my machine, but it's definitely at the point I would start to serve shots to my neighbors and friends. I've pulled espresso on machines ranging from under $100 new to ones costing more than any car I'll ever own. They differ quite a bit, but there are some simple techniques you can use to get better results across machines. Again, my advice is only going to apply to standard portafilters and not pressurized portafilters, which produce their own back pressure. First, puck preparation. I assume you have some kind of tamper because most espresso machines come with them and it is difficult to make good espresso without them. All tampers are not the same, however. Some are curved and some are flat, some are loose, and some perfectly fit in the portafilter and leave no grounds on the side as you push them down. There's a lot of different designs. The most important result you should look for in a tamper is that it achieves a flat bed and that it didn't push grounds unevenly in doing so. As great espresso tampers are flat, have no marks in their surface, and fit the portafilter snugly. The main problem I've experienced is a tamper that does not fit the portafilter. Some are quite small and you have to tamp around many times to get it flat. I just haven't gotten as good of results with too small a tamper. Try to find a tamper that fits your port filter well. Next, temperature. Budget espresso machines often do not have reliable temperature control. PID is an upgrade that makes it easier for me to pull good shots on my machine, but it does not make the best possible shot I could serve any better. Without a temperature control system, the best extractions I've found require some temperature surfing. This involves turning the machine off and letting the water temperature decrease until it's in the right zone. Every machine will do this differently, so you'll have to look for good guides on this, but one or more techniques exist for most machines. Some machines have a heat exchanging system, which involves the steam boiler heating the water for pouring espresso. This often requires pulling water through the machine before making a shot, and guides for this can be found online. I have never worked on a heat exchanging machine, so I don't have anything to offer here. Conclusion, recap. I hope you enjoyed this series about espresso. Stick around to the end if you want my final tips. It was a labor of love, and I've wanted to make this for a long time. I'd appreciate any feedback, including critiques about how we can all make better espresso, especially if it doesn't involve spending lots of money. In the future, this YouTube channel will focus on coffee, science, and other topics. Please keep in touch and subscribe if you want to see future videos. Also check out my last video about brewing good coffee and cheap machines. You'll get to see whether a teleprompter and minimal skill in editing makes my videos more watchable. I suspect they do. Extra tips. So there are many more small tips that can help you achieve even extractions. Here are a few I've found to be helpful. Slow down, be careful. Don't knock the portafilter around. Dose is a nice way to make precise adjustments to your extraction. This is why a 10th gram scale is important when improving your espresso. Simply measuring precisely your dose and beverage weight can improve your espresso more than if you invested in twice as expensive a grinder or espresso machine. I have frequently relied on using a 10th gram scale to help bridge the gap between an expensive espresso grinder and a cheaper one with fewer settings. Giving the grounds a shake or stir when you are putting them in the portafilter can make the distribution more even. This takes a while, but that's okay in a home environment. Make sure the tamp presses to a very even height around the portafilter. Some portafilters have grooves, which make it easy to tell if the grounds are the same depth. Sometimes you can just use the top of the tamper to do this, but it's a little harder. I just rely on my distribution tool, and it's better than I am even with years of practice. Change your recipe based on how the shot tastes. There's a tendency for espresso trainers to say that an under-extracted shot will taste sour and an over-extracted shot will taste bitter. I don't have a problem with this, but it's not always clear whether the problem with a shot is whether it's more bitter or more sour. I find that it is easier to just push finer or coarser, see if the shot tastes better to me, and use that information as a guide. If it tasted harsh and bitter and the shot took a long time to extract, I might coarsen up the grind. 
If it tasted dry and thin and came out quickly, I would tighten up the grind. A good upgrade available to most espresso machines is a bottomless portafilter. This allows you to see if more water comes through one side, through the center, or through the outsides more quickly. It also shows you if there were particularly large channels of water coming through because the water will spray in a stream. I also find it easier to keep espresso contacting surfaces clean while brewing many shots. Another good upgrade is a new shower screen and hardware. I was able to exchange the original bolt from my machine with one that takes up less room so I can fit more espresso into my basket. Many coffee grinders have replaceable burrs, and as long as there aren't initial break-in problems, a new set of burrs produces a tighter distribution and is a great thing to consider if your old coffee grinder still has a lot of life left, but the burrs produce a lot of fines. Many burrs for light commercial machines like mine, or those for home use, have inexpensive original or third-party burrs. Mine were less than $40. My sources of inspiration are linked in the video description. I deeply recommend checking them out and supporting other creators. Okay, that's it. Feel free to like or leave a comment, and if you subscribe, you'll be notified of the next video I make. Goodbye. As follows are the important inputs. <laughs> I'm a robot.